Welcome to episode 48 of On Our Bike, Taupo to Auckland via Mount Monganui and then home to Brisbane. This is the last episode from our five month trip. So we decided to come home from Lake Taupo via Matamata and up over the range to Taronga. This was a fantastic road we discovered a few years ago, 100 kilometers an hour, nice sweeping bends, dual lane most of the way and a great way to finish the ride back to Taronga. So we arrived back in Papamoa, sky's cloudy, had a few minutes to kill so we decided to head off down to the beach for a look. It's a beautiful beach there, hence the reason we stay there. And plenty of nice takeaway shops as well. One of my dreams was to film a row of Bahutakawa trees, also known as New Zealand Christmas trees, in full flower. I finally got to do this as we were leaving Papamoa. Sadly, the colours weren't as spectacular as I hoped because the weather was so cloudy. It's our last morning in New Zealand. We're in Auckland and just been out for a bit of breakfast and now we're going to head back to the hotel and get ready to check out for our flight. And today, of course, it's raining. These are the tidal steps. People actually swim in here. I don't think I'd like to. Hello viewers. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> As I just mentioned, it's our last morning in Wellington, sorry, Auckland, and I'm still wearing my puffer jacket, which I would not have thought for the beginning of December. And there's the sky tower behind us. And yeah. I'm running across the bridge. <laughs> Magical. I get to stand still, done against the walking circles. <laughs> and over there. It's the beach. 
beast. It's called the beast. It's got a boat on there big enough to live on. And they need two cranes to lift it on and off the boat. Haven't quite worked out what it is. But we will. And so that's it. It's raining, it's overcast, it's cold. And it's just been like it the whole trip. Well, not, not quite, quite the whole trip. We had one or two days. Last time we were in Auckland, they were renovating this old swing bridge that um, accesses the Viaduct Harbour. So this trip, it's almost done. It's a new walkway for people to come across. And it looks pretty darn good. And it's a novel way to uh, preserve history. There's one of Donna's Pahutakawa trees with more um, red blossoms than we've ever seen, followed by Christmas decorations as we're walking through town. And then it was time to hop on the bus and off we go. So as a wrap up on the trip, we did about 13,500K on the bike and about 3,500 in a car that we had during the winter on the South Island. Hi everybody, we've been home for almost two weeks now and we thought we'd do a little bit of a wrap up from our trip. Um, we thought we'd start with some of the new toys that we brought. One of them that we brought before we left was a remote for the GoPro so that when I'm wearing my big winter gloves and can't manage to turn the, the GoPro it's... on and off, Murray uses that from the handlebars. Yep, it's and called it's... the remote from GoPro yeah. and uh, ended up being worth its weight in gold. So one of the better things that we bought. Uh, followed then by a Telson blogging stick which extends out quite nice. Also comes with this cute little remote control and it works for the phone and the GoPro. So that was a pretty good idea at the time. We um, didn't buy that till the end of our trip so <laughs> but we will get a lot of enjoyment, a lot of use out of it going forward. Yeah, and then the other thing we bought was a Peak Designs tripod that goes on the phone. So it's magnetic, folds down like that. Don't know whether you can see, but we'll give it a crack. And uh, it just became a very simple... Oh, became a very simple way of taking selfies um, compacts up very very tiny which was a good idea in the long run because then we had the um, the footage that we could also use with the DJI Mini 3 Pro and take selfies with that as well so they're the things that we tried to use to enhance. Alright so this is our list of wrap-up questions for each other so I'm going to start by asking Murray, what was his favourite road? Uh, simple answer is 90% of the roads <laughs> that we went on. And that just happens to be one of the reasons that we go to New Zealand. It's a little bit uh, uh, harder these days because they've reduced the speed limit. 
but by reducing the speed limit they've also enhanced the viewing capabilities because I've discovered with my patience of going slower that you get to see a lot more things and when you've done a few roads that you've done before you actually see things that you never saw before because you are too busy enjoying the windy roads and trying to see how far that BMW would lay over. <laughs> But anyway, that's my answer. Um, whether they be on the South Island or the North Island, it, it doesn't really matter. The Crown Ranges was fantastic. The Haast Range was fantastic. The West Coast was fantastic. Arthur's Pass in the Pissing Down Rain. Lewis Pass in the Freezing Cold to Hamner Springs. Too many to too many to even try to recall. And then when you go up north, you've, um, you've got the roads, what's, what's the range up north on the North Island? Oh, the west coast up past Dargaville, down through Pahia, Russell Island, around the East Cape, it's, uh, it's just everywhere you go. And I knew that that was going to be his answer. Um, so one of my favourite roads was one that we had, we've actually done before, I think, heading south in the rain. So this time we were heading north and it was the Aokino Gorge, which was just magnificent. And the one, um, I can't remember what it's called now, where we saw that big structure thing. Uh, the big structure thing was orange. <laughs> and... Uh, you and, can't remember that. And I can't remember its <laughs> name, name either. Past, and maybe we need to sit here with a map so that we get it right. <laughs> but we didn't buy any maps because we just used the phone and the GPS, all of which was good. But we have discovered that in future trips, we really need to travel with a hard copy as well. Uh, it just makes planning a bit easier. It's all right to look at it on the phone, but the phone only has a little tiny screen and you've got to move it around and then all of a sudden you don't know where you are but if you get a new map it'll tell you that you're about to go onto an unsealed road or it'll tell you that you're going to stay on a sealed road and I think sometimes that's a uh, a very vital thing to know. Okay so now it's my turn to ask Donna a question. Next on the list was accommodation and what she thought was one of the most favourite places that we stayed at. I have three, actually I'll probably have more than three, but I'll start with three. Um, the Ridge Resort in Queenstown, it had amazing views over the lake and it had we had our own private spa on our deck. It was a three bedroom, which was overkill. We didn't need that. We had a wood fire, a wood, uh, wood burning fire, a slow combustion wood fire, I think yeah, we called them. That'll do and for this description. That was amazing. So my second favourite would be at a little place called Lee, which is north of Auckland, called Lee Central. And it was a really cute little sort of batch style motel, which was really lovely, I enjoyed that. And my third favourite would be in Taupo, which was called the, the Lakeview, Resort. Lakeview Resort. And that was a two bedroom. Um, again, we had a, a sort of private courtyard with our own spa pool, so that's always nice. Uh, we had views of the lake from the second bedroom and we could, it was just like a, a less than a minute walk down to the lakefront so that was really really lovely. Uh, and plus the other numerous places that we stayed were all very good and um, about the only one that we had a go bad with is because we were trying to uh, save a buck was the uh, Raglan Backpackers which um, was a bit of an eye-opener. We were going to stay there two nights, left after one, and then stayed at the pub in town. Good choice. <laughs> okay. And the, the photos online of that place looked like they were probably 30 years old, so it looked nothing like what Murray saw before he booked it. Yeah. Uh, so. Perhaps we're too old to rough it in some of those grungy backpacker places. <laughs> so it was a lesson well learnt. Mm. Okay. okay, action. Action. So, favourite meal? Oh. I'll put you on the spot now. Let's... She has put me on the spot. Okay, let's... I can only say that it wasn't Burger King <laughs> and it wasn't KFC, as much as I'd like to say that could have been amongst my favourite meals. It just wasn't. 
Uh, McDonald's, it also rated down the bottom as well. So fast food appeared to be out of the equation. Uh, Shall I break it down for you? No, 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 that's okay. I can keep blundering through. We had a awesome meal at uh, a pub in Golden Bay when we were staying there on the South Island. That was really fantastic. Uh, we had a nice smoko at Collingwood. That was pretty awesome. I think there's just too many places to think of where the meals were good. There were more good meals than bad meals. And uh, like I say, 99% of the bad meals was fast food. So we never bothered with them. Um, and that's about it for me for meals. I can't narrow it down to anything specific. Uh, okay, so I will go with the best hamburger, which I'm not usually a big hamburger fan. We had a hamburger at the Port Waikato Caravan Park. There's yeah, a couple that... there that run a food van. And it's just like an old fashioned burger that you used to buy when you were before McDonald's came onto the scene. Most expensive fish and chips and the smallest serving of fish and chips was at, um, no, Mangan, Ma, um, Mangan, Manganui. Manganui. And we'd had fish and chips there before, which was awesome. And this time it was a sad disappointment. The piece of fish was tiny and the serve of chips was really tiny as well. It tasted okay, but very, very small for its price. Okay, so the next question was worst road. Uh, another put me on the spot question. <laughs> but uh, what we found on this trip, we like to go down a few dirt roads. And we actually found that um, they'd resurfaced a lot of the roads with really large gravel. So that made things a little tiny bit tricky with the two of us and the gear. Uh, so we had to choose our roads wisely and I guess that's where the hard map would have come into play that's on that as for sealed roads as they call them in New Zealand uh, I don't know Donald's obviously probably got one in mind but I haven't got too many it's funny because the Kiwis all talk about how shit their roads are but obviously they've never been in Queensland <laughs> Or New South Wales. <laughs> or um, Victoria. <laughs> so, you know, for us when the Kiwis spoke about bad roads, we couldn't we couldn't even agree with them because we just thought the roads were great. Um, the only thing we don't like about it is when they reseal, they just put tar down, then they put loose rock on it, then they leave the loose rock on it and it eventually goes away after a couple of weeks. So as a motorcyclist, it's not the safest thing. Mm -hmm. So the worst, couple of worst roads, the road that goes down into the top end of 90 Mile, the 90 Mile Beach come off the road. Someone had put down fresh gravel, no warning, and it was like just for a small section of road. So the only way that you knew was that it was a different color to the other gravel. So that was pretty scary. The other road was heading to Lee and um, it was the gravel had probably gone. Murray thinks it was freshly graded and it was kind of like freshly graded mud. <laughs> clay, <laughs> clay is the clay, word she's looking for. Which looked like mud and it was really slippery. So Murray said, I can't stop, I can't stop, I just have to keep going. So that was pretty scary for a little bit. Only because um, it was raining. Yeah, it was wet. If it was dry, it probably would have been a different story. So. That's my worst roads. Any disappointments from the trip, my love? Uh, no, there was no really uh, great disappointment. You get disappointed when you hop off the plane and you go to fill up your vehicle for the first time. <laughs> That's always a bit of a shock, um, but you get used to it. And uh, the only thing I can say is you don't bother looking at the bill, you just go and pay it. Uh, no other real disappointments to think of. Um, everybody in New Zealand that we basically spoke to at tourist attractions, museums uh, and the like were fantastic. Always up for a chat, 
could talk about anything. Uh, I used to keep the bike at Tecmoto in Auckland. I needed some new stuff while we were there. Uh, Phil was just fantastic. Uh, Mount Motorcycles in Mount Monganui. They store the bike for us. Got nothing but praise for those guys. They've just helped us out no end. So it makes traveling to New Zealand um, a real pleasure. We, we have friends in Napier that just welcome us with open arms every time we turn up. And um, yeah, it's, it, I can't really fault it and I guess that's the reason we go back. We go back for the roads, we go back from the scenery, we go back for the friendly people, we go back because that just happens to be where the motorcycle is. <laughs> and we like to pay a lot of money for fuel, so we go back for that <laughs> as well. But anyway, you Kiwis have got to put up with that every day of life, so it's no use us Aussies complaining about mm -hmm. it. But it's something, as an international traveller, you just need to be aware that you need to have a little bit more money for fuel. Uh, as for the other cost of living, slightly higher than Australia, but that's just how it goes. So my disappointment would be the weather. And I grew up, and I know you can't predict the weather and you can't control it, but I grew up in New Zealand, so I sort of had a, a small expectation of what it might be like. I had um, a plan that I wanted to swim in the lakes, I wanted to swim at the beach, and it just did not happen because it was a lot colder. Um, you might have picked up from a previous video that we were still wearing our puffer jackets in Auckland in the very beginning of December. So that's just not normal. All the Kiwis that you speak to, you sort of say, well, you know, is, that, is this normal weather? And they said, no, it is not normal weather. So we had um, a lot of rain and one of the things that we both have acquired now is um, decent or better motorbike jackets. So our previous trip we got wet this trip we stayed dry which was awesome. The other thing we brought were waterproof socks which I never knew existed and that was a big help too because my boots don't um, don't keep my feet dry so that was a big help so they'll be coming with us on any future travel so so is there anything else that you want to add? No, that's about, about it. That I wrap up? That's about today? it. That's about You're it. Finished? I think I'm finished. Um, Unless we have to do a take two. <laughs> we may well have to do a take two. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll have a look at this. This is the first time we've done anything like this. So if so, it's a failure, we'll have to start all over again and nobody will see this. Yeah, that's right. But if so. it's, if it's a excellent, then we'll share it. Until <laughs> <laughs> no, next time. Uh, excellent, yeah. Goodbye. Bye. So apparently we needed to do a small take two because we didn't quite get it all in the first one. It's as we said, we're a bit nervous. So um, here's a few more things that we missed out. Okay, so I wanted to talk about my simple pleasures. And uh, this is big for me. I, I, I really am grateful for those simple pleasures in life and I appreciate them. So for me, my simple pleasures are always sunsets and sunrises. Um, I absolutely love the New Zealand gardens, the cold climate gardens, and that's one thing I miss living in Queensland. It's palm trees, palm trees, and more palm trees. And I also love watching bumblebees, which we don't get in Queensland. We do get them in Tasmania, though, which is interesting. And I love watching the tuis when they're feeding. So those are my simple pleasures. And I also wanted to briefly touch on what we're doing for 2024. So the first part of the year we're spending some time just around um, South East Queensland and then in April we're heading off to far north Queensland with our Mitsubishi Rosa bus converted to a motorhome. Uh, we're towing the uh, Murray Bilter trailer and we're towing the Australian BMW um, and so we can sort of explore on the bike a little bit as well. And then the later part of the year we're heading to Tasmania so we'll take the long slow road down and back and I think we have about a month in Tasmania in total so got those things to look forward to so there'll be more yep. videos heading your way. Yep and hopefully we'll improve on the standard <laughs> and only get better and better yep. but 
you just never know. We mm. could get worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting up with us. Yeah, we are and, uh, um, self-taught doing this stuff, so <laughs> this is neither of our backgrounds or fortes. So um, we're learning as we go, and I think from feedback we are getting better each time. So yeah. hopefully that will improve. And Continue. We can go back and look at it ourselves and go, well, that's what we did. And that's a great time we had. Let's do it again. <laughs> but anyway, till right. then, we'll see you in the new year. Signing off. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs>